be of grace see what grace can accomplish in the life of a man in the life of a woman because god makes that christian to triumph in christ and then it says and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place in second timothy chapter 2 second timothy chapter 2 I'm reading from verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Does God change? Does his foundation change? No. In this modern time, that same foundation of God still stands sure. Sure and steadfast. And what's that foundation? Having the seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. That word, uh, if you want just one word for that, that's repentance. But you know that you cannot continue in sin and say the grace of God should abound. If you want to really be in Christ and you want to have a real, vital, vibrant life in Christ, you start with repentance. That's the foundation. And when you turn away from sin, you receive Jesus Christ into your life as your personal Savior. And then you give over the direction, the control of your life unto him. And when he controls the life, that's when you have the triumphant life. And you the foundation of God stand is true. No matter where you are, in whatever country, whatever church, whatever denomination, whatever age or dispensation, this is the foundation of God. It stands firm and it stands sure and it says let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from what? From iniquity. You know, in some um, congregations, you cannot mention adultery, you cannot mention fornication, you cannot mention drunkenness, you cannot mention all these things, but I believe that this is a congregation that wants the totality of the word of God. To depart from iniquity means to depart from fornication, from adultery and from drunkenness, and from homosexuality, and from all those things the Bible condemns, it says this is the foundation. And we need to understand that if we're going to serve the Lord, we quit sinning, and we quit the evil that we have been practicing in our lives. We come to Christ, and with that repentance, we turn to the Lord, and our faith in Christ, then there is salvation. And with that salvation, we still don't stop there. We move on. Look at verse 21. If a man therefore purge himself from these, if a man therefore purge himself, this part of strengthening the foundation, the foundation of your Christian life, the foundation of the triumphant life, that if a man will therefore purge himself from all these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet or suitable of feet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work verse 22 was the first word there and when last did you hear that from a preacher flee flee like joseph fled you flee you're on your way from anything that is sinful anything that will get you back to where you came from anything that will get you back to those evil things in your life of the past it says now you have known jesus christ as your personal savior this is the foundation of the christian life if we don't have this foundation of repentance and righteousness there's nothing you can really build on such a life we'll not be able to move on with the lord that's why you need to re-examine again and check it up all over again how is the foundation of my christian life did i depart from iniquity and have i purged myself from all these things and then it says in verse 22 flee also used for lusts flee youthful lust what are we to do to youthful lusts again our culture here says tolerate youthful lust excuse youthful lust are they not just young people 
All these things we find lots of young people. Don't, don't correct them. Don't be so heavy on them. Leave them the way they are. Don't you want young people in your church? If you're talking to these young people on repentance and turning away from sin and then coming out clean and don't touch this and don't go this way and don't practice that, get back to Calvary and be cleansed and washed in the blood of the Lamb and then turn over and live a life that glorifies the Lord. If you talk about things like that, you're not going to have young people in your church. That's what they tell us. They say we should just accommodate everything they say, everything they do. And if you come to the camp here and you see one boy and one girl in the night and then they are making some you know bad relationship together if you report to any of the leaders what's happening to you they're still children they're young people if you correct all those things don't go out in the night like this and don't do and in the camp when you have the camp next year young people are not going to come the young people are here because we give them liberty and we let them do whatever they want to do no they are here because they need to be saved they are here because they need to be cleansed they are here because the blood of jesus ought to wash them whiter than snow they are here because we want to lead them to a life of prayer a life of purity a life that will totally turn around so that when they get back to their schools or to wherever they come from the people will take note of them they are being with christ and will say where did you go during the holidays and they'll say i went to deeper life camp and then they'll say i'll follow you there next time yeah. praise the lord that's the foundation without that kind of foundation if we're just tolerating that and accepting that and covering up that and you know excusing that there'll be no church church is the assembly of people who are cleansed from people who have repented and people who have their lives changed transformed and the people that have the power of god demonstrated in a transformed life flee youthful lusts but follow righteousness Faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of what kind of heart? Out of a pure heart. That's the foundation. And we're getting a scriptural perception of what the foundation of the triumphant life is. I'm looking at Romans chapter 6, verse 11. Romans chapter 6. We're looking at verse 11. Romans 6, 11. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves dead indeed unto sin. Likewise reckon ye also yourself dead indeed unto sin. We're coming from verse 1. Before we read this, verse 11. Paul the apostle had been telling the people, reminding them, if you have now come into the faith, you've come into the Christian life, you're coming to Christ, here is it, the grace of God is now in your life, and it says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that God, that grace may abound? What's the answer? God forbid god forbid shall we continue in sin that grace may abound shall we continue in sin that church may grow that's what some people think you know and they say if we keep to the word of god the church will not grow i understand if you keep to the word of god the society will not grow if you keep to the word of god the club will not grow you have received the message from our pastor, Pastor W. F. Kumoye, the General Superintendent of the Palais Bible Church. It is my wish that as you listen, you will accept the old world and you will let them sink into the, your hearts. And by the grace of the Lord, you will never regret it. It is my prayer that by next week, when our, our pastor shall come up again to present another message, you will be there, your family will be there, and your friends. And I believe as you are listening to the message every week, by the grace of the Lord, you will never be the same. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, O Lord, because of today's message. We thank you, O Lord, because of the one you let us listen to last week, and the one we are going to listen to the next week, by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. If you tarry, we shall listen together once again next week. And if not, every one of us will be there with you in the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord that answers prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.